reptiles are usually categorized as easy, intermediate, or difficult to keep. But what if I told you some of the easy reptiles actually kind of suck? Today we're going to go over the top five easy, awesome reptiles that are actually kind of difficult to care for. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. I know that you know I'm going to say it, but I'll say it anyway. No reptiles actually suck. When I say this, I just mean that there are certain things about easy reptiles that make them kind of difficult to actually care for, and for some people, that would really suck for them to keep. So, all reptiles are awesome, all of these ones are awesome and have many points that make them that way, but have one thing that makes them kind of suck. And just quickly before we jump into the list, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around, we'll get into that in a second. So let's start it off with number five, tricolor hognose snakes. Now these are beautiful. If you're looking for something that has a tricolor banding, milk snakes are a great choice, but what if you want something that's a little bit smaller than most species of milk snakes anyway, and also has kind of like a cool factor with the shovel nose and their rear fang venomous? Well then, you would want a tricolor hog nose. Now these come from South America, this type of area. They come from a more humid environment than you'd find with most Westerns, which are plains now actually, or dusties or mex. Anyway, what was used to be called, what was used to be called? What used to be called Western hog nose snakes are more common and they are drier species, where a tricolor is a little bit more humid. There's actually quite a few things that make these guys super awesome besides their pattern. The fact that they can produce Produce eggs like egg machines. They're ready as soon as two years. Why is I'm doing this? This is one. They're ready as soon as two years into life. Whereas a Western, I always wait three years before a female is ready to be bred. And that's exactly why they suck. The reason that they can produce eggs so early and so many of them, we're talking four to five clutches, some people have said, for sure two or three, is because they are so short-lived. So to keep the species going, they need to be egg-producing machines because they don't have a lot of time. Where a hognose snake might live 15 or 20 years, a western, these guys live five to eight. I'm quite sure that I read the longest substantiated claim of a lifespan for these was eight years. Now, eight years in terms of reptiles is a really short lifespan. And because I am just like everybody else and I get attached to my pets, just like I'm sure you do, that really sucks. I mean, uh, you get attached to them and then by the time you love them, they're already gone, which is really sad because it feels like they never got to live much of a life because to us, five years is nothing. So although in a nutshell, I would say they're amazing pets, I would just say that they are a little bit uh, sucky or a little bit of a pain because they're gonna break your heart. So that is the suckiness factor of these. Otherwise, amazing snakes. Number four, something with more limbs, Chinese cave geckos. Now, if you watch this channel, you might be thinking, what are you talking about, dude? You just talked these up a few months ago like they were the best thing to ever happen in the reptile hobby. Well, they're pretty amazing. There's one thing though, and before we get to that, let me just sell you on them real quick. They have very strong feet, so they can do goofy things like this, and because they come from cave systems in China, and this works with Japanese cave geckos too, by the way, but Chinese cave geckos, they have strong feet and they can climb things, although they're labeled as terrestrial by most keepers. This means if you made something like a rock background, like something that you see here, which I was very lucky to go get to make at Snake Discovery last week, you can watch the video right here if you want to see that. I think that if you gave them an opportunity to climb, they would. I'm going to test this because I am now inspired from that competition I got to do to make more enclosures like that. So you'll start seeing more things like that and is starting off with my Chinese cave geckos. They are a great size, like a leopard gecko or an African fat tail, a similar type of size. They're not difficult to keep. They're insectivores, so get yourself some crickets, dubia roaches, and mealworms and you're A-OK, -okay. sprinkle some vitamin and calcium on it and D3 and you're good to go. Not only that, but they're crepuscular, which means that, or some people even say nocturnal, but they don't need UVB light. In fact, they can thrive without it. So they are cheap to feed, they are cheap to house, they are beautiful, they kind of look like the emo version of a leopard gecko, so what could possibly be wrong with them? Well, the ease of care. But you just said they were easy to care for, so how does it, well, the ease of care is that they like low temperatures. 
but they like high humidity. And this is kind of counterproductive for most reptiles in that if you gave, say, a ball python a low temperature and a high humidity, that snake would likely get a respiratory infection. These guys need it, and I'm talking low. We're talking like 65 to 75, a lot of keepers will say. A lot of people who are experienced say never get close to 80 but they need their humidity to be quite high. And this might be difficult for a lot of keepers to be able to pull off. So that's why I think they kinda suck, just because they might be difficult for some keepers and you have to put a little bit more thought than, oh, it's emo leopard gecko. I like My Chemical Romance, come on home. You can't just do that, right? You have to put a little bit more thought into how you're going to take care of them. But other than that, like, have you kind of got the idea of this video that none of these suck and like the suckiness is remedied super easy? Chinese cave geckos are freaking awesome. Okay, before we get on with our list, I wanna say thank you to this week's sponsor, Skillshare. If you are looking for a platform that is curated for learning, not advertisements or all this mumbo jumbo, just learning a new skill or brushing up on a skill you already have, Skillshare is the perfect platform for you. There are new classes put on Skillshare every single week, and I actually just finished one. Edit with MKBHD, taught by Marquez Brownlee. I finished it last weekend. It's really helped me, I think, with the production quality. Even this video, I think, is better than the last. And if you wanna brush up on your skills or get better at something you already love, from movie production, photography, coding, web development, whatever it is, there is a class for you. And because you watch this channel, if you are one of the first thousand subscribers to hit the link, in the pinned comment or the description below. You can get one month free and after that it is super affordable to continue and you're gonna see the value and want to anyway. This offer is running from June to September so we only have a few more weeks. I know you're gonna love Skillshare as much as I do and again, Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Number three, you know I have to do it. I have to ruin the list with an amphibian, axolotls. Now, don't get me wrong, I have axolotls like I have basically everything on this list, but I think that the reason that they are not great for most people, well, we're gonna wait actually. Why they're so great is because they're so cute, they are fully aquatic, which means that you can watch them not only at the bottom of the tank or giving them something to climb, they can just kind of float to, well, you guys know how liquids work, right? You can like float through them, which is awesome because your eye goes all over the tank, and I think that a lot of the times, aquatic tanks are visually appealing and more so than certain type of terrestrial or even arboreal setups. Not only that, but watching them eat is quite a treat. Ah, oh, that rhymed, I'm a rapper now. They will gobble up worms and brine shrimp and things like that, and there's even prepared diets that you can feed to these guys, and the water parameters aren't that difficult to keep up with, so if you know that I usually complain about water parameters and that's not the sucky thing, what could the sucky thing be about these awesome amphibians? Well, they like it really cool. And this is a problem because I'm not talking about kind of cool, ah, you know, a little bit cool. No, these guys like it in the 60s. We're talking about low, mid, sometimes people will say high 60s, but if you start to encroach on 70, 72, then they start getting stressed out big time. So for this reason, you have to sometimes get a chiller or have a basement. And I know half of the world doesn't have a basement. Now I do, I'm lucky, but it still kind of sucks because when I stick them down there, I don't want to have my axolotls down there. I want to have them in my living room, but I can't because even though I have air conditioning, it gets too warm for them. Even if I wanted to keep my house at 66 in the summer and pay $5 million for hydroelectricity to cool it down with the air conditioner, I can't. Like. It just gets too hot here. And I'm in Canada. So imagine you lived in South Texas or Arizona or somewhere like that, or parts of Australia where you can actually keep axolotls, I found out, which is pretty cool. I mean, you're pooched, good luck. But if you have a way like we do here to just keep them in a basement or something like that, then you're not gonna have too many issues keeping them at the right temperature and everything else is pretty easy as long as you know how to do a water change and test water for water parameters then you're a-okay. And they're super rewarding because they're super fun to watch if you get an active one. So all in all, oxalotls are pretty awesome. Number two awesome reptile that kind of sucks, egg-eating snakes. Now, this one seems super obvious. These guys are awesome because they just eat eggs and they actually can't even bite you because these guys do not have teeth. 
Now, they might make a biting type of lunge at you, but even if they have their mouth open, they don't have teeth to bite you with. Not only that, but they've got these crazy scales that they can rub together to kind of sound like a venomous snake from their native range, which is awesome. They're super cute. They're hilarious to watch eat because they eat eggs. So the egg goes in their mouth to about like, let's suppose I'm a sneaky little snake. Goes to about like here, a couple vertebrae down, and then they puncture it with these spiny little projections inside their throat, and they suck down the juice, all the fluid of the egg, and they spit out the eggshell. So it seems pretty easy. You don't need feeders in your fridge. You don't need to go out and buy feeders. So just get some eggs. What's the big deal? Well, the awesome thing is that they eat eggs. But the crappy thing is that they eat eggs. And the reason for this is if you get an adult, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, then you don't have to worry about it. Just go to an Asian supermarket or even some big chain supermarkets have quail eggs, big size, regular quail eggs. But if you have a baby, difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. These guys need things like quin quinch. What's a quinch? Finch or button quail eggs. And these actually can be pretty hard to find. In fact, the only reason that I don't have a egg eating snake is simply because I can't find eggs small enough to feed to a baby and I've never found an adult available for sale. And this is just a testament to basic good reptile keeping, responsible reptile keeping. Never get something that you can't take care of. And in my situation, I can't properly take care of an egg eating snake, so I can't get one. Don't be the silly Sally that gets one and realizes later and then you either neglect it or have to sell it. Like, don't do that. So that is why they kind of suck. But otherwise, if you have a food source, these guys aren't that difficult to care for. They're super fun, they're handleable. They're just awesome in every way. And I love African egg eating snakes. Number one, easy and awesome reptile that actually kind of sucks. And this will come as no surprise to anyone who's hit that little subscribe button, which I'd appreciate if you do before we reveal it. Hit the subscribe and the like button. Diamond does a little jig every time. See, he just, anyway, number one, chameleons. Okay, I get a bad rap because I am the chameleon hater. I don't actually hate chameleons. I love chameleons. I talk so much junk about them because I see how popular they are, how easy they are to find, and how cheap they can be, and most people can't take care of them, and I'll just get it right out of the way. They're fragile. These guys are fragile. Now I know that there are many species of chameleons and some are easier than others, but there really aren't any species that I know of that are easy, in my opinion, as easy as a corn snake, ball python, leopard gecko, something like that. So for this reason, I think they belong in the list at number one, because if I had a dime for every time someone said, oh, my chameleon is sick, my chameleon dropped dead in its cage and I don't know what's going on, my chameleon is really stressed, my chameleon is hanging out at the bottom of the cage even though it has, well, it's, it's because you're doing something wrong or it's just you don't even know that you're doing something wrong or, I mean, there's just, there's something there's something wrong. Now they're amazing animals, they're super rewarding, there's so many of them. I mean, if you look at a Jackson's chameleon or a carpet chameleon or a panther, anyway, if you look at these guys, you understand why people love them. But they're not easy pets and not everyone should have one. In fact, I think most people probably aren't ready for them. So I'm not saying that they suck because chameleons suck. I'm saying they suck for most people because most people can't properly take care of a chameleon. All I'm trying to do here is make people realize, huh, maybe I should think twice before getting this animal. That's it, I'm not hating on them, I still think that they're awesome. In fact, if I had a little bit of a smaller collection that took less time, I could get animals like frilled dragons or chameleons that take more time. But I just am happy with the species that I have. I think that I have enough time <laughs> during the week that I spend in the reptile room and I don't want a bigger commitment like that. So maybe down the road, maybe if I could hire someone to help me take care of reptiles, but again, responsible pet ownership. I'm trying to practice what I preach. And even though I would love one, I'm just not ready for one. So there you go. Those are your top five easy, awesome reptiles that actually kind of suck. What do you think? Do you agree with this list? Do you think that this was kind of a silly goose list? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for hitting like and subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it really helps this channel immensely. And as always, thank you so much to the Patreon supporters. 
You guys get videos early. You guys get to know about things in my collection that I haven't shown the entire channel yet. You get so many things extra. And for as little as $1 a month, you can be part of the Patreon subscribership family, whatever we call it as well. And uh, I've rambled long enough. So because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Monday.